Do you know how people recognize themselves in a mirror? No, how do they? It's quite a complex process. First, they look into the mirror and see their image. Then, they somehow know that the person they are looking at is themselves. How do you think people know it is themselves? They probably don't have a clue how they do it. Some people say it has to do with their sense of self or consciousness, but nobody really knows for sure. Does anyone really know, or is it only a matter of our current state of knowledge? Well, the consensus is that people recognize themselves in the mirror because they are familiar with their own mind patterns. We're familiar with how our mind works. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. Our minds provide a model for our mirror image through which we see ourselves. That's how we know it's us. That gets us back to the original question. Why do people look at themselves and then recognize themselves? It probably is something to do with ego-centeredness. That's a difficult concept to grasp. What is ego-centeredness? People relate to the world through themselves. We call this ego-centeredness. How can you relate to the world through yourself? Does this mean people see everything through their own eyes? That's right. Their awareness of everything around them is mediated by their sense of self. They see themselves reflected in everything they perceive. Hence, they believe they're at the center of it all. It seems to me that people should learn how to see themselves objectively, not as the center of everything. That's what I'm trying to say. Most people can't break away from their ego-centeredness. I thought we were talking about self-centeredness, not ego-centeredness. The distinction is pretty fine, but the difference is significant. Ego-centeredness refers to how people relate to the world through their own mind patterns and perceptions, whereas self-centeredness refers to their tendency toward excessive individualism and self-interest over other concerned individuals in society. But neither are healthy for individuals or societies for that matter. That's a pretty bleak view of human nature. It is, isn't it? How do you propose we remedy these tendencies in people? I can't say for sure, but I think people need a sense of belonging. A sense that they are a part of a whole. Only then will they be able to see themselves in their true context. Do you think human beings are naturally social animals? Yes, let's go with that assumption for now. We make the best of our innate sociability by forming communities and societies that benefit us by sharing our needs and resources as well as helping one another to overcome the struggles and hardships we face in life. Self-centeredness must be dangerous in our world of ever-growing material and technological resources. Do you think people should be more altruistic? Perhaps, but I don't think it's an either slash or phenomena. It's not a choice between being selfish or altruistic. It's a matter of balance. What do you mean by balance? We have to find the right amount of self-reliance and social responsibility in order to live in harmony with ourselves and others without falling into destructive patterns. It's a tricky balancing act. That makes sense. It would be nice to live in a society where people were open and honest about their needs, but also willing to give what they can and help one another. I think we need to develop a concept of collective self-interest. What I mean is that people should consider the good of the group to be just as important as their own self-interests. Would this not amount to sacrificing one's self-interests on behalf of others? Perhaps, at least temporarily. But in order for someone's actions and ideas to have any real meaning or value, they have to be rooted in the individual's values and beliefs. This is essential to prevent corruption and abuses of power. You need to be true to yourself and your own convictions. But you said self-centeredness is a detriment to people and societies, so how can we avoid being hypocrites or being corrupted by the powers we are able to wield over others? I'm not saying we should forsake our self-interests. In fact, I personally believe that self-interest can be a force for good if it is put in its proper perspective. I think the best way for us to deal with these issues is individually and collectively through rational discourse and deliberation. I think that might be a good way to start. 
I just want people to be honest with themselves and others so they can see things in a more balanced way. People have to be willing to listen and take into account other people's concerns and interests. What I mean is that our self-interest has to take into consideration the interests of others, not just our own. That's what we mean by balance between self-reliance and social responsibility. That sounds like a lot of work. Can't we just do what other people do? Yes, we can follow the crowd, but as usual in human society, some will pull ahead while others fall behind. Then we have to struggle to find our place in society. That's what I mean by balance. So you're saying we should strive towards a balance between self-reliance and social responsibility, but also strive to achieve that balance in the best way we can, individually and collectively. I have always thought of myself as an individual, but your ideas about collective self-interest leave me feeling a bit uneasy. It feels like I'm being pulled in two opposing directions. The tension is there because you believe you are truly an individual who acts independently from others. But you're not really independent from everyone else. You are part of a larger whole from which all things are created and sustained. We are all interrelated. Okay, I think I understand, but balancing self-reliance and social responsibility is tough. It feels like the scales can get so out of balance that one can no longer function normally in society. That's why I think we should try to achieve balance in the best of ways and for the most part, avoid extremes. No one has to completely abandon self-interest, but only find a way to make it work for everyone's good. Do you think people should share more? Yes, we need to share common resources and responsibilities for the good of all. There is a way to do this in a way that can benefit everyone concerned. Okay, I think we have covered pretty much everything. Thank you, Professor Halp. You're welcome. Now I think we need to get lunch. Okay, I think I will go ahead and call it a night. It was fun talking to you today. You're welcome. Just remember to be careful of your own principles as well as those of others. A balance has to be reached between self-reliance and social responsibility in order for things to work out in the long run. Mm -hmm.